Psalm 90 momentarily. Got several things I want to share with you this morning. I want to ask these young men if they will to help me. At least every, and there are two different things, so do both sides if you will. At least every couple needs one. Not every person, but every, there's a husband and wife, you can just give them one. You start on this side. And there are two pages, so Nate and Cameron have, have two different things, so don't, don't turn one of them away. You need, you need both of them. Perhaps for some time now, this class has been anticipated. I hope you're not, uh, your expectations are not too lofty, and therefore they are, uh, we don't hit your expectations, but I do have a lot of things I want to accomplish the majority of which is giving you a lot of information that, that I want you to take and, and, and meditate upon and read and study and think about yourself. Uh, for, for a long time now, I felt that, that I felt that Bible class is perhaps the best time of our spiritual growth. And right, wrong, or indifferent, I'm not here to debate that, but the Bible class here at Leoma is, is very short. The time is very short. And so um, what, what, I'm, what I'm admitting to you is I don't even, I don't even, I'm not even going to attempt to cover all that I want to cover. I'm going to give a lot of it to you and ask you to cover it uh, because of the time constraints that we have and, and because of the material that I want you to be exposed to. Now, It'll be up to you what you do with it at home. But remember, my hypothesis going into all of this is that, is that, and I, I'm just going to boil it down into, into what I want to say that they won't let me say on paper because it ain't professional enough. My hypothesis is just basically this. You and I put on a different uniform on Sunday than we do on Monday. That's my hypothesis. That you and I think and process differently because of the compartmentalization that our minds does so very well. And, and as I study this more and more, let me, let me speak to the males for just a moment, because guys, guys, we're, we're a lot better at this than women are. And that's not a good thing. But by and large, according to psychological studies, males are much more capable of compartmentalizing their lives. And so, and so it's even a greater challenge for us that as, as compared to our, to our female counterparts that, that they, they have, it's not that, that females can't, it's just that, that it's much more difficult because females tend to see things big picture where males tend to see things here and now more often. And so my, my fear is, is that life becomes here and now. And so, okay, here I am. Here and now, I'm at church. Well, I got on. Well, I got on suit and tie, right? You got on some form of dress clothes, okay? Unless you're a, a, a doctor or a lawyer or a, a, a professional business person, this is probably not something you wear to work on Mondays, right? It looks a little different, maybe, just slightly. And so, tomorrow, you're... You're, you're in a different place. And what are you going to do with that? And how are you going to process it? And how are you going to use it? You know, we think about Sundays and we think about, well, okay, so 930 is set for us. Six o'clock is set for us. I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm just saying I have my schedule for Sunday. I know where I'm going to be at, at 930. I know where I'm going to be, at, Lord willing, at six o'clock. But then, Mondays are different. Well, maybe we have somewhere to be at 8 o'clock and, and, or 7 o'clock. And then, and then at some point in the afternoon, you know, we get released from that responsibility, whatever it is. 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. Now what? What are we going to do with that? So, here's, here's what I thought I'd do. You know, I've had a really busy week this week. And... And I'm, I'm really behind, so, so I think I'm just going to let y'all determine what the class is. Would that be fair? Y'all just tell me what, 
you want to study today because I don't really I don't really have a plan. I don't really have any thing to cover. So I just thought as many of us as there were in here and as many great minds that are in this building right now, surely together we could just so that make it a lot easier on me, see that I won't have to I won't have to prepare it during the week. I just show up on Sunday and y'all tell me what you want to study and we'll just study it together. So what do you want to study? You live life like that? Do you make that much preparation for life? You know I'm kidding, right? I mean, these boys have been passing out papers for 45 minutes now, right? You know, you know I didn't come unprepared, right? You know I ain't going to let you tell me what we're going to study. Uh-uh. No, I'm in charge of this class. I'm going to tell you what we're going to study, right? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But I am trying to make the point that I'm afraid that far too much of our lives is planned by the seat of our britches and we don't get out of it what we need to get out of. In the same way, if a teacher don't come prepared for Bible class, do you see how both bells could ring and nothing is accomplished? Wouldn't you feel real good this morning if, if during the worship hour I, I said, well, I, I don't really have a sermon today, Roger, but what I do have is a Bible, and I know how to read it. So won't you just open your Bible and let's start reading together. Wouldn't you, wouldn't, you, wouldn't you go home and eat lunch and think, wow, man, our preacher really got his stuff together, right? But yet, But yet you can get up four or five days a week and have absolutely no purpose or plan or preparation and, and God can be pleased with that somehow. I'm just, I'm just asking you to think with me. As we began to introduce the topic of, of time management, that this, is, this is tied into finances, but let me use it for, let me use it for money. If you don't, I mean, let me use it for time, rather. It was used for money, and I'm borrowing it from from Dave Ramsey. If you don't tell your time what it's going to be, it'll tell you what it's going to be. Right? If you don't allocate, and if you don't set aside, and if you don't plan and purpose your time just like money, It'll control you and tell you what you're going to do. And from now to November, if, if, just, if I am just helped a little bit to regain some control of the time in my... See, here's a question I'm really asking. Are, are we just filling our time? In other words, are we just living as though without a purpose... Or are we living with a purpose? Are we living with a plan? You see, are we just filling time or are we investing time? And if we're investing time, then what are we investing it in? Does life have a purpose? And, and I'll be the first to admit, and I, I said this two or three times on purpose, and Marie might remember it now, Friday, Two or three times I I said on purpose for her ears to hear for the purpose that I could repeat it this morning. Well, there's another thing off my list. I got that one done. Now, what's next? I said that two or three times Friday morning on purpose. Because oftentimes I find myself living like that. And that's not investing. That's not living with purpose. That's just, that's just, this is what I got to get done today, right? And so it's, as it were, a checklist. And if we're not careful, while while jobs may become checklist-oriented, in other words, production-oriented, fair enough, but if we're not careful when we come home, guess what? Or before we go in, we're checklist-oriented. 
What have I got to get done today? Check. Check. When I get home, what have I got to get done? Check. Check. When it comes to the evening time, what has to be accomplished? Check. Check. Now watch it. We wake up on Sunday morning. What have I got to get done today? Check. Check. Are we investing our time wisely? Are we using it to be a blessing for the Lord? Are we living life just for the sake of living it? Or do we recognize that we, that we have a purpose and we have a, have a reason? And perhaps more and more today, you, you know that the computer was supposed to, the computer was supposed to solve all problems, right? I love reading about the invention of the computer. The computer was supposed to solve all problems. We were going to have to work half as much, and we were going to get twice as much done. And the sad reality of it is, is that we work longer now, and we get less done, thanks to the wonderful computer, right? So what's the point? The point is, is that there, there isn't, there, there isn't a, a fancy technological advancement out there for time management. It all boils down to self-discipline. Boy, those, those words are tough, right? It's amazing to me as I study time management how much of it coincides with, with and, and I'm, I'm using Financial Peace University, but how much of it coincides with financial management. You see, at the end of the day, management is management, right? It doesn't matter what you're managing. And so I'm amazed at how much I'm reminded of, of going through that class of financial management that, that applies to, to time management. It applies to management, period. How well do we control? Or is it controlling us? Those are some questions that we hope to give some greater thought and detail into as we as we move through this study, and I don't know that we'll cover everything you want to cover, but we'll cover all that we can in the time that we have. This was a pie graph, and I, by the way, I love graphs, and I love statistics, and, and a lot of what I give you is, is that. And so on one of, those pieces, one of those pieces of paper, you find my outline. You know why I give you an outline? Because when, when the bell rings and I say, well, we didn't get where we needed to go, you can call me a poor time manager. You'd be correct. And number two, you can have the outline so I can say, hey, there you go, right? There's your homework. On one of those pages is this pie graph. And basically, this is a, this is a 24-hour day with a person of, of 25 to 54 years of age with children. And this is kind of, on average, how it's spent. You kind of look at the choppiness of it. Obviously, one of the big blocks is work, and one of the big blocks is, is sleep. So, essentially, if you take a 24-hour day, you have a third of it in this quadrant, maybe just a hair more, and you have a third of it roughly in this quadrant. So, you have a third of it sleeping, you have a third of it working for those who are employed with a full-time job. For those who are retired, well, you really only have one-third that is spoken for, and that's, that's really this third right here. And some might say, well, Rodney, as you get a little older, you have sleep a little longer, so it might be a little more than a third. Fair enough, but my point is, is that this third is not here anymore as far as a job. And so, so, you, so you're essentially working with two-thirds of your day, is what I'm trying to say. Whereas those who are employed full-time, we're working with a third, but we're still working with something. We still have a part of every day, every 24-hour period that we are, we are working with. Even though we may work 8, 10, 12 hours, and, and we may sleep 6, 7, 8 hours, there's still that, that doesn't equal 24, and I'm not very good at math, but it, it, there's still some hours in there where we make some choices as to how we spend them how we use them, how we invest them. 
And so this pie graph says, you know, things like household activities, leisure activities, sporting events, eating and drinking. That's pretty essential, isn't it? Caring for others. Obviously, that would include children if they be of age where they have to be cared for. And then there's almost two hours of just what they classify as, as other. And so, and so when you look at that and you think, well, okay, we got to eat and we got to drink. So we spend about an hour doing that a day. And we got to do, you know, the dishes and we got to do the laundry or we got to, you know, vacuum the house. Okay, so we got some household activities we got to do. Uh, you know, if we got small children or if we've got parents who, who need our care or, or siblings who need our care, okay, well, there's, there's, there's another hour, hour and a half of our day that, where we spend caring for others. And Okay, so, so we just kind of take all that aside. We take sleep aside. We take work aside. And so now here we are left with two and a half hours here and almost two hours here. Two and a half and two is... Four and a half, right? Four and a half hours per day. So what are we doing with that? I told you what Kyle shared, that the average American now is, is watching close to four hours of television a day. So, so some people are, are using their four and a half hours, their four hours to, to do that. Maybe not every day, but certainly on some days, you know, I... I'll just, I'll just be real and frank. I watched TV for four and a half hours yesterday. Probably more than that if I really sat down and put a figure on it. And, and the, the likelihood of reality is, is that every Saturday from now to the 1st of December that I don't have something to do, I'll probably watch four and a half hours of television every Saturday. Now, if you've got a problem with that, see me after class and we'll talk about it. I'm just being honest with you. So I kind of know where my four and a half hours went yesterday. Maybe a little more than that. I, I, I'm, just, I'm just using myself to illustrate. I made that choice. Now, whether it was a right or wrong choice, well, that could be a matter of opinion. And you and I could differ on opinions. But I'm just admitting to you that there are, there are several hours every day that you and I choose how we spend them. Whether it's sitting on the back deck or whether it's sitting at Hardy's drinking coffee or whether it's reading the newspaper or watching television or going for a walk or shopping or I, you just fill in the blank i'm just i'm just saying there's some hours that, well i don't i don't have enough time to do all i need to get done anyway you ever said that you know i think the greatest invention of all times would be an eighth day don't you i mean if they could just create an eighth day in the week That'd be the greatest invention of all time. You know, that'd give me 24 extra. Because I'm, I'm on between work and, and, and home and family and, and, and responsibility. I, I, just, I don't have enough time to do all that I, I need to do anyway. Be careful with that. Be very, very careful. There may be times in life when job responsibilities are calling on you 12, 14, 16 hours a day and and it makes it tough, and therefore your four and a half hours may come shorter for a week or a month or two months or three months. But be careful with, be careful with saying, I don't have enough time. Because the reality of it is, is that some of those things we're all doing, including myself, are by choice. I choose to do, right? And yeah, my schedule's full from sun up to sundown. I, I've got every hour allotted for. And, and the reason is, is because I want to go do this. And I want to do this. And I feel like this needs to be done. And, and we need to evaluate sometimes. Does it? Is that really how I need to be spending this 30 minutes or hour or two hours or three hours? Is that the best way to spend it? If it is, go spend it. But just like with money, we need to treat time as a valuable, valuable asset to which God is giving us to be stewards over. When's the last time you stopped and thought, when you stand before God on Judgment Day, you're going to give an account. We, we often say, we're going to give an account to how we lived life. Well, that's true, right? But, but let's get a little more specific. We're going to give an account... For how we use the four and a half hours of every day 
that we were alive. We use some of them working overtime. Fair enough. Nothing wrong with working overtime. We use them all working overtime. Well, that might not have been the wisest of choices. I don't know. Maybe you needed to. Maybe you had to. We spent all four and a half of them every day watching television. Well, was that the best use of them every day? Maybe it was some days. Maybe not. We used all four and a half extra, or, or not extra, but our hours there that we're not allotting to something else for play, leisure, hobbies. Was it... Is it really wise to use all of them that way? I, I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not telling you. If you come in here for me to tell you how to live your life, you came in here for the wrong reason. Because I'm not qualified to tell you how to live your life. What I am asking you to do is consider with me how we are living. How am I living it? How am I living this one? I have no business in yours. How am I living mine? What am I using my time to do? And how am I spending it based on what I, what I need to do and what my responsibilities are? I found this in 2014, and this is on your sheet, by the way, so I'm not going to spend just a minute, but the, the average life expectancy is 78.6 years. Some of, you are, some of you are on bonus time, right? Some of, us, some of us hadn't got there yet. And the reality of it is, is that some of us may not get there, right? If you're already there, you're, you're on bonus time. You're above the life expectancy. So, so you, you're getting additional time. Maybe, maybe some of us are getting real close to 78.6 years. Reality of it is some of us are a long way away from it. And the trueness of it all is that several people die short of it. Right? And I may be one of them. So I'm not guaranteed that. But the average life expectancy, there it is. And... And if somebody sat down with a lot more time than I've got and divided it up, and just look at some of the things you do. This is on, a, on, a, on, a, on an article entitled, 30 Surprising Facts of How We Spend Our Time. So there's 30 of them, and, well, just to be quite honest with you, there's a few of them on there I just didn't want to display in a, in a mixed gender uh, uh, class of multi-ages here. So if you care to look up the article, Google 30 Amazing Facts of How We Spend Our Time in America. And this is the article you'll get. I've got you about 12 or 13 of them here. But there's 30 of them in all. But just look at some of them. 25 years sleeping. Well, that's, that's a third, isn't it? Didn't we, didn't we say roughly a third of every day? So a third of 78 years, roughly. Uh, if you want the exact third of it, you'll have to find somebody better in math than me, but a third of 75 is 25, so roughly a third of your life sleeping, over 10 years of your life, and that's based on a 40-hour week, if you work more than a 40-hour week, obviously many of us began working before we were 20, and many of us will continue working, or have, or are, after we're 65, but that's based on 20 to 65, 17 years, women, 17 years of your life trying to lose weight. Thought that was interesting. Nine years of television. Two years of... That number's got to be going down with DVR, hasn't it? Surely we don't spend two. I, I don't watch commercials anymore, so maybe, maybe that'll get better and we won't waste two years on commercials thanks to technology. 4.3 years in a car traveling to the moon and back three times. And some of you drive more than that, right? Walking a total, look down here, walking a total of 110,000 miles in a lifetime. That's four trips all the way around the world. Just, just walking there for the average American. Women spend nearly a year deciding what to wear. A year and a half doing their hair, some a lot more. And office workers, those who, like me, use a desk and have a desk chair... We spend five years, five years of our lives sitting, sitting at a desk. Now, just some fascinating numbers to me there out of those 30 that, that, I, that I just pull out. And, and, and so what, I, what I'm trying to get you to see is that, is that, listen, some of this driving is to work and back. I got that. But a lot of it ain't. 
Some of this walking is at work, but a lot of it ain't. I, I don't know how you do anything with TV, but leisure. I, I, don't, I don't know why you'd watch the TV for anything other. Maybe you watch it for, maybe you use something on the TV to learn, ABC or something, to, to learn there uh, with the television. But, but in my mind, those nine years are spent leisurely over the course of 78 years. And so, so there, there's just some things to look at there and think about how we spend our time. On your outline there, Leroy Brownlow says that tomorrow is our greatest problem. You ever thought about that? Tomorrow is our greatest problem. Why? Because we're going to do everything tomorrow. To which he wrote this poem. He was going to be all that a mortal should be tomorrow. No one would ever be better than he tomorrow. Each morning he stacked up the letters he'd write tomorrow. If it was too bad indeed, he was too busy to see Bill, but he promised he'd do it tomorrow. The greatest of workers this man would have been tomorrow. The world would have known him had he ever seen tomorrow. But the fact is he died and faded from view, and all that was left was when living was through was a mountain of things he intended to do tomorrow. Leroy Brownlow says in his little workbook on the Christian's greatest problems that when it comes to time, our greatest enemy is tomorrow. And immediately passages like James chapter 4 flood the mind, right? What is your life? It's only but a vapor. Why would you boast and brag about what you'll do tomorrow? You don't even know that you'll have tomorrow. And then we hear people say, you know, why would you put off till tomorrow what you could do today? And certainly those can be important. Gene Taylor says that the best motto is this. Live as though Christ died yesterday, arose this morning, and is coming back tomorrow. Now think about that. Perhaps you've heard it in dozens of sermons. What if... What if Christ was coming back today, right? What would you do today if Christ was coming back? Well, Gene Taylor says, live every day, every single day, as though tomorrow, tomorrow's it. Christ is coming back tomorrow. Now, what are you going to do with today, right? What's going to be? And, and you see, for me, here's, here's what happens. While, while we sit here and... I mean, I, I, I stand here at 32 years old. I have very few health problems. And I just got to be honest with you, I don't, I don't think about dying a whole lot. You know? It's just not a thought that crosses my mind very, very often. I mean, I'm, I've still got a long time to live, at least in my mind. And so it's easy for me to think, well, ah, oh, that ain't, you know, that ain't important right now. I'll do that tomorrow. Or... Or, yeah, I'll get to that, you know, later on down the week, Thursday, Friday, you know, because I'm not going to die today or tomorrow or Tuesday. And if we're not careful, right, we began to use our lives for time that really doesn't. You see, if I knew tomorrow was it, and for you too, you would, you would act a little differently today, wouldn't you? You would, you would do some things a little differently, wouldn't you? You would, you would spend your time, those four and a half hours, you might choose to do some other stuff, right? You might decide that, hey, you know what, since tomorrow's it, well, this ain't that important. Maybe something else is more important. And ultimately... That's the gist of this class. It's trying to get us to see what is, what is most important for this moment. What is most important right now? What is it that matters the most for me to do with each day of my life? How am I going to spend it? How am I going to use it? How am I going to invest it? What difference is it going to make? What purpose does it have? 
Am I just am I just living so that at the end of the week all I've got to show for it is a paycheck? Or or am I living life to get the most and to be the most that I can be? In Psalm 90, before our time runs out, verse 9, For all our days pass away in thy wrath. We we spend our years as a tale that is that is told. You know, I hate to bring up bad thoughts or bad memories, but but we've all been to a funeral, right? We've all been to a funeral of a, of a loved one, and 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 at that funeral, you know, it's it's at some point in there. Typically, there there's you know, there there's some there's some memories, there's some stories, there's some there's some obituary information as we call it, where so and so was born and. You know, and so and so died, and so and so lived in this county, and so and so lived, and so and so did this, and they did that, and they worked this occupation, and then you might get it. Well, now you remember when when this person was a child, and you remember, and and do you hear Psalm ninety and verse nine? For all of our days pass away, and we spend our years as a tale that is that is told. Life is living, and we're writing, we're writing on this scroll as it scrolls out. And somewhere down the line, at some point, somebody may take that scroll, and they may stand up in a funeral home somewhere, and they may, they may read some of that scroll. There's the tale of your life as it's told. The days of our years, you've heard verse 10, three score and ten. And if by reason of strength, maybe four score, yeah, their strength is in labor and sorrow, for it's soon cut off and we fly away. Job 14 and verse 1. Man born of woman is a few days and full of trouble, full of sorrow. Because we live in a world where, where our lives are described by labor and sorrow. And it's soon cut off. Seventy years, maybe by chance eighty years. Isn't it amazing how the life expectancy is 78.6 years, kind of right in the middle of that? You know, the psalmist knew way back. I believe this to be Moses writing, the old wise man Moses writing Psalm 90. Seventy years, if by chance maybe 80. And who knows the power of thine anger, even according to the fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days from now to november that's what we're going to try to do we're going to try to number our days what does it mean to number our days just to count them well okay maybe but does it mean more than that in other words do i recognize that yesterday was a gift from god and it's a number and i don't get that number back like that day's gone i don't i don't get to rewind yesterday I don't get to replay yesterday. I don't get to call an audible for yesterday. I don't get to take a mulligan or or say, now God, could could we just please go back Saturday morning and let's just kind of re-come back to the present. I don't get to do that. Neither do you. So as we number our days, think about the importance of each day. That is each Monday, each Tuesday, each Wednesday. Your homework, your homework is Ecclesiastes chapter 3. I want you to read Ecclesiastes chapter 3 this week. I want you to meditate upon it. I want you to spend some time with it. Think about what the wise man said there in those first eight verses about how there's a time for everything, but then look at them in view of the last three verses, verses 20 and following. Think about what he says there and connect the dots. hope something's been beneficial to you today. Thank you for being here this morning. If you have your survey, please give it to me. I have two surveys that don't have a code on them. So if you've turned in a survey and you didn't put a code at the top, I'm going to lay them on the front pew. If you will, come put a code on it, look at it. I can tell you that they are, I got a female in her 60s, 70s, and I got a female in her 60s or 70s. Both been a Christian for 30 years. So that's about all I can tell you. One's got blue ink, one's got black ink. If you think one of them is yours, I don't want to know who you are. I just need a code to be able to use them. So if I don't get a code on them, they're not of any value to me. So thank you for being here this morning. I'll lay them right here.